Well, as the late, great Keith Jackson used to say, whoa, Nelly, the Anaheim Ducks have just scored two quick goals to start the third period. It's 3-1 for the Anaheim Ducks right now. Over to Vegas Golden Knights, who suddenly could be playing the Dallas Stars. But the Kings still have to win. <laughs> it's not enough. The King, the Kings need, oh, and right just as I say this, the Kings score. Unbelievable. They just wow. did. This, this is some just kind like of they joke. just scored. Yeah, exactly. Just a walkie talkie. Score, 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 <laughs> score now. Let's go. Son of a bitch. I've got a parlay with Vegas and LA. Stupid Vegas. <laughs> I had a bad feeling about that game. Those guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I figured they want to avoid Dallas, Cam. I figured Vegas would yeah. be the ones that'd be like, yeah, we don't want to play Dallas. We'll play Edmonton. I don't think Vegas cares, personally. Like Edmonton, they obviously, or because they're not beating the Ducks, something's going on here. You know what? Weird. This, if I'm, if I'm the, if I'm the Edmonton Oilers, this is big for the Oilers. Actually, I'd way rather play the LA Kings than the Vegas Golden Knights. If I'm the Edmonton Oilers, we beat the Kings all the time, and we lose to the Knights all the time. Like, do the math. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. LA, LA falls short, Julio, all the time to Edmonton. They don't have the firepower. You know what I mean to keep up. Right. Vegas are bigger and just sort of give Edmonton a problem. But Edmonton had bad goaltending last year in the playoffs. So I think, I think Edmonton, I know Edmonton are getting their ass handed to them now, but this game didn't mean anything to them. So yeah, what, uh, hold on, Julio. Tense. Let me welcome Sirius back and we'll get your plays in uh, here. You know, 5 1 for the Avs right now as this NHL season mercifully you know, comes to an end. It just <laughs> won't end. That's <laughs> stupid. Right. And shout out to everyone joining us on Sirius XM channel 159. Big card Julio in the house. All right, Julio, the floor is yours. What do you got for us? Best bets. All right, let's go with the futures market first as the Stanley Cup playoffs begin on Saturday. I'm going with the Colorado Avalanche to win the Western Conference plus 400. And I'm going to ride the lightning until someone beats them and until this group breaks up. I'm riding the lightning 12 to 1 to win the Eastern Conference. So give me the lightning and the Avs to meet in the Stanley Cup once again. Uh, On Saturday, I like the Avalanche minus 105 to beat Winnipeg. Uh, I'm riding the hot streak of the Washington Capitals. Washington plus a puck and a half, minus 140, under five and a half, minus 120. Uh, On the diamond, the White Sox are terrible. I've already torn up my 22 to one White Sox to make the playoff ticket, but we do have them to be the worst team in the major leagues. They play the (laughs) Phillies tomorrow. Yeah, tear it up. 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 Uh, Phillies, Phillies on the run line plus uh, 130. I know Garrett Crochet, best pitcher for the White Sox right now, but once you get to the bullpen, I think the Phillies will be just fine. We'll go on the soccer pitch. Wolverhampton plus two goals against Arsenal. So you need three goals to beat us on this market. If they lose by two, it's a push. Colorado Rapids have been playing very well in the MLS. Give me under two and a half goals against FC Dallas. And I like a couple of clean sheets. Juventus, a clean sheet, plus 120. Napoli, clean sheet, plus 162. And uh, that's about it. Uh, well, that's about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> They're showing on the screen, but I know we're running short on time. So it's quite a bit. Oh. Well, you got you got time. You got it's time. Tagliari okay. versus uh, Juventus. Got Italian team. soccer yeah. too. More, yeah, more, yeah. More. yeah. So Juvent- Juventus, a clean sheet against Calgary. Uh, Napoli against Empoli. Empoli are going to get relegated from City. Ah, uh, Atalanta minus one eighteen on the money line. <laughs> We're going to Spain. That's where my sister's hanging out right now. Atletico de Madrid on the money line against Alvarez. Under two and a half goals, Celta Vigo y Las Palmas. And Athletic Club Bilbao, clean sheet against Granada. That's quite a bit of action you brought here. uh, That's an international card. Wow. My passport is fully stamped. All, All that you're missing is some UFL football. Uh, that goes down Saturday. Take the St. Louis uh, Battle Hawk game to go over and the uh, Memphis Showboats plus the points. Yeah, and, three uh, to one Memphis teams is... now. So uh, I just tore up my under tickets as well. No, it's not over yet. For the yeah, three one, one your White Sox. Three no, one your White teams. Sox. Yeah, your White Sox tickets done though, Julio. You can that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was yeah, that, that that garbage. Done. Yeah, that is done. Up. Yeah. So I already tore three, it up. Three one LA Kings and the Ducks are uh Ducks are winning three one, which means 
the the um, the L.A. Kings would play the Edmonton Oilers, and the Vegas Golden Knights would get the Dallas Stars. And as I stated, this changes everything for me. Actually, I've been talking about liking Dallas. You talked about call, liking Colorado, Julio. I think Ed, I, I'm buying in. I think Edmonton can actually get to the Cup. I like the bracket that they're in. They're going to play the winner of Nashville and and Vancouver, and. Like I said, the winner, I think Vancouver could be Nashville. Then suddenly the winner of Vancouver and Edmonton is in the semifinals. You look at Dallas. Dallas are going to have to play the Vegas Golden Knights and then play the winner of the Avalanche and the Jets. They could lose either one of those series. Vancouver and Edmonton get easier matchups. It's the, they're just in a better, they're in a better side of the bracket. The way this stupid NHL bracket works out, it's better for them. Yep, it is. Level three has begun. This is Sports Rage. I am Randy, the Mr. Blair, the hustle, the people, the bus, and everybody else in between. We got craziness in the late night hours here in the NHL as they're finishing off the, the playoff seating and positions here. The Anaheim Ducks lead the Vegas Golden Knights 3 1, and the Kings are up on the Hawks right now 3 1. If these results remained the way that they go, and I'll tell you, there's only 11 minutes left in the Vegas Golden Knight game, these results remain the way that they do. The Los Angeles Kings would then play the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs, and the uh, Vegas Golden Knights would have to deal with the Dallas Stars, which would not be an easy task. Jimmy Butler is out for tomorrow night's uh, basketball game. We'll get Julio and Cam out of here. Uh, Julio Rosario with us. Julio, you said you just told us you're taking the um, the the Colorado Avalanche. I think it's a homer pick for you living in Denver yeah. now in the Colorado area. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I have to say, yeah. I Too much of the Colorado little, lettuce. Gabe, yeah. I told you. A little, I, I little did bit a of a homer pick there. My, my mic <laughs> will be cut in 30 seconds. I have the Leafs going to the Stanley Cup. And that's the biggest homer pick of them all. That's a big homer pick. Against the man. Dallas Stars. Against the Dallas Stars. The Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Dallas Stars is your Stanley Cup prediction? That is correct. And the Ranger, I'm going to do one with the Rangers and Stars. Yeah, I think Dallas gets there. Yeah, I think we're, we're I, you know, we haven't talked enough. I don't know what's crazy. I used to be big on the Rangers the last couple of years, and now this year they're actually really good, and I haven't really been on them that much. Mm. I'm a little worried about the President's Cup curse, which is, like, really real for the Rangers, yes. but they get the Capitals in the first round. They'll be able to handle the Capitals, and then they can just sort of get rolling after that, and maybe there'll be some upsets and stuff along the way. I don't know about the Leafs. I think the Leafs can beat I, the Bruins, but I think they can lose to the I, Bruins too. But I think they'll lose to Dallas. I think Dallas will win the Stanley Cup, and the Leafs will lose in the in the Stanley Cup Finals and break everyone's heart again. That's just the Leafs' way. I'm going to say Edmonton and Carolina. Mm, old school. They met before. Endor. I might, I might not jump on the homer pick, too. Give me uh, Vancouver and Carolina. Yeah, there we go. We <laughs> homer. <right there. laughs> homer. 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 <laughs> about the Otani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well. Four day green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The early line only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and 
a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10 plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi, the Pistol Players, the Hustlers, the people to bust them, and everybody else uh, in between. Brent Beard's going to step up and join us. We're going to talk football uh, with Brent in a couple of minutes. I just want to get to something as far as the NFL draft is concerned. We're now one week away from the NFL draft. And I put a bet in yesterday for Jaden Daniels in a parlay with the Dodgers alternate line uh, to be the second pick in the draft. And I laid minus 250 uh, with this bet. I, You know, it was just me. You know, the draft is coming up. The numbers are bouncing all over the place. So it's like, I got to get this bet in, man. Right? I, I got to get this bet in. It was minus 300 in some spots. There's been a lot of just sort of, you know, yeah, he, da- Daniels is the guy they're taking in Washington. Just sort of like the feeling behind the scenes is that Daniels is the guy that, you know, you look, they got Cliff Kingsbury in there as the offensive coordinator. A lot of people think Daniels is better than Caleb Williams. And I think that, you know, with Kingsbury in that room, I think he, you know, if he loved Kyler Murray as much as he did, who do you think he's going to like between Daniels and and May? They just had a North Carolina quarterback. Are they really going to trade Sam Howell to just bring in the guy that he replaced, like are the commanders North Carolina now? I think they're going with Jane Daniels, but for whatever reason, people are severely disagreeing with that right now. As Jaden Daniels to be the second pick in the draft is all the way down to minus 130 right now. And and I'm looking, I'm like, wow. So my bet, I posted it, so I'm transparent with the plays that I make. I put a three, it was in game. The Dodgers were losing two nothing. And I was like, you know what, I'll play an alt line plus three and a half with this Jaden Daniels. I put three hundred and seventy four dollars on it. They're willing to give me three fourteen right now. It hasn't even happened yet, and I've lost, so I've lost sixty dollars. And it hasn't even happened yet. So I got to do the math here at minus 130. So what happens if I take the um, if I take the 314 and I bet the 130, it comes to less than the 628 still that I would still get hanging on to it. They're pretty good with doing that. And it's kind of the same thing. So now you have to ask yourself, wow, why is it all the way down to 130? Does somebody know something? I don't think so. So I'm telling you now, if you didn't already bet this, I still believe that Jaden Daniels will be the second pick in the draft. I don't know why this has been, why the odds just plummeted right now, but at the same point in time, anybody that's followed this NFL draft process, and we've been talking about it a lot more than other shows do, dude, the numbers go crazy all the time. Like, there's always line moves. I'm just an idiot for jumping in yesterday at the wrong time. I, you know, I could have saw this now. I'd be like, well, I'll put 500 on this then. Right, I just bet it at the wrong time. I don't always get it right with the timing of it. But I still do believe, I don't care. 
because I got a bunch of people tweeting me now, oh, Marantzi, are you worried now about your Jaden Daniels bet? I'm like, no, I'm not. What, because there's an internet report or this or that? Like, no, you know, and I, I believe they're going to take Jaden Daniels second uh, overall. I think the third pick, I don't know. Like, you know, I got J.J. McCarthy going third. Is it to New England, though? The New England Patriots are pretty open about it. A lot of teams aren't, you know, they don't talk and or they won't, they won't really, they'll be cryptic or they'll, they'll speak out of both sides of their mouth so they don't really tell you anything in the end. Well, we're open, but we like to pick, but we're open to business and stuff. The Patriots were pretty open about it and stating that we have a lot of needs and we're trying to stockpile as many draft picks as we can. So, like, they're, the Patriots let it be known publicly. We're open for business, all right? And we're at the point now, right now, where everybody's been waiting for a trade. Oh, the Vikings are going to move up. The Broncos are going to move up. The Raiders are going to move up. Somebody's going to move up for a quarterback. It hasn't happened yet, and I think now NFL GMs at the top are starting to, like, say, all right, let's just have an open house publicly about this, right? Let it be known we're open for business. The question is, teams might think, we don't have to trade up to get the guy that we want. We don't. I don't know who they like, per se, right? So there's a lot of smokescreen stuff going on now. But I, I still think Jaden Downs, I think it's a good bet at minus 130 right now that Jaden Downs is the second pick overall. Let me check in on these odds. I bet this yesterday, too. If I got worse odds now, I'm just going to quit this show and uh, and walk off the set right now, and uh, I tap out. <laughs> if I got a worse, I'm going to cry. If I got a worse number on this one. I took over under offensive linemen taken in the first round. I got plus 160, plus 160 to the under. All right, offensive, here it is, offensive lineman drafted. All right, it's exactly the same still right now. It's still plus 160. This isn't a glamorous bet, so it's not really moving around too much. But um, I bet the under, I don't think they're going to get to 10 when it comes to offensive linemen taken in the first round. That's a lot. I think, you know, we might get to eight, nine is the, you know, I don't think we get to 10. So I'm going to, I pull the trigger on the under nine and a half at plus 160 offensive lineman drafted. We'll check in tomorrow and see what uh, what's up with the odds. And the other one that I put in was uh, Brock Bowers to be a top 10 pick. Brock Bowers to be a top 10 pick. This number's a little bit different at a couple of spots. It's in the plus 100 to plus 120 range. Some places it's starting to be minus money at minus 105, minus 110 type of deal. Uh, we'll talk about this with Brett Beard. He's seen Brock, uh, Brock Bowers up close covering the SEC Heisman Trophy voter that he is. And he thinks he's one of the best players he's ever seen before. And I got to tell you, as a Michigan Wolverine fan, as somebody that watched Brock Bowers carve our uh, great defense up, I know how good this guy is. Like, you know, this guy is, I think he's also, like, generational type of deal. And I know, like, people don't like taking tight ends that high, but he's not really a tight end. He's just a football player. To me, he's like a combination of of um, Travis Kelsey and Cooper Cup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's a tight end, but he's going to catch a million balls. And he's going to make a bunch of plays for you and, like, you know, whatever team he's on, he's going to become the favorite target of the quarterback. He's going to be a fantasy stud, DFS stud, all that stuff. He's just a football player, this guy. And I've got him going potentially to to, to the Titans at seven. But I'm wondering about the Titans because they've, they've done so much on offense and free agency in the offseason, right? They already have DeAndre Hopkins. They bring in Calvin Ridley. They bring in uh, Tony Pollard, uh, running back from the Cowboys. Calvin Ridley comes over. They they've had a nice off season, so wouldn't sh- you know? Do the Titans go defense? But they got that seven pick man, and Brock Bowers in that offense with Will Levis and company would just sort of be the icing on the cake for them. And then I'm not sure that Brock Bowers would get past ten and the New York Jets. So I got Bowers being a uh, the you know the prop is every book has this. Uh, will a player be a top ten pick? I say yes. Brock Bowers will be a top 10 pick. Tennessee's interesting, though. For just from a betting standpoint, the kid Murphy, uh, Byron Murphy, the kid Murphy out of uh, Texas. Dude, this guy, Rick Saratella is a draft crew. This guy, and he's not the only one. A lot of people think Murphy could be the first defensive player taken 
if Tennessee goes defense, let's say they don't go Dallas Turner, they go Murphy. Murphy is like 150 to 1 right now to be the seventh pick in the draft, which I find to be crazy. It's a lottery ticket, yes, but I think it's a lottery ticket we're playing. And same with Dallas Turner to go seventh overall. Would not uh, would not shock me. Quickly on the Buffalo Bills, um, somebody asked me on Twitter today, what do I think of, like, the Bills are going to take a wide receiver. Brandon Bean, the general manager of the Bills, publicly said, uh, everybody thinks that we're taking a wide receiver, but we don't see that we have a glaring hole on our team. We like our, our wide receiver room. You like your wide receiver room? There's no one in it. <laughs> You like your wide receiver room. Anyways, him saying that, translation, we're, we're definitely, like, he's trying to put it out there. We're not desperate for a wide receiver. Well, we all know you're taking a wide receiver. So, Xavier Worthy, and I'm a Bills fan, and I'm not saying that I would take Xavier Worthy because Bills fans always come at me after, well, oh, you know, no, this, you shouldn't do that. You asked me who I thought they were going to take, not who I would take. You asked me who I thought. they We're not betting on who you think they're going to take or what you would take or what I would take. we got to bet on what they're going to do. And I think the Bills would like Xavier Worthy, the kid out of Texas. That's going to be so fast. Being like dudes like him. Tani's story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, you, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well. Four game green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
The Thursday Night Throwdown continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moretz. He shout out to all of our AM radio affiliates joining us on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. Countdown to the National Football League draft is on. We are officially just one week away uh, right now. And spring football games continue at the college of football level. Another transfer portal has opened. Let's break it down. A second helping in the house, Mr. Brett Beard, Heisman Trophy voter, First Coast News College football analyst, and more. Brett, it's always a pleasure, my man. Thanks for joining us. Gabe, it's great to be able to be with you. We had eight SEC games last week. We've got more to come. Uh, As you said, the portal is wide open in football and uh, with basketball. So uh, it is a a great time of year in a lot of ways. And you're right, the the draft uh, just a week away. So... Being in Jacksonville here with the Jaguars, they're trying to figure out what to do, too. Uh, but uh, uh, love, love this time of year, particularly with the spring games. So Ohio State's uh, spring game was on uh, national television. Alabama was on national television as well right. on uh, right. ESPN. But as far as the Buckeyes are concerned, uh, Brent, and it pains me to say this as a Michigan Wolverine, but <laughs> they might be the most talented team in college football history. I don't even think I'm that. That's like like literally and fairly, yeah, like uh, Joel Clatt was saying the same thing about watching them live. He's basically yeah. they, their offensive line might not be perfect, uh, yeah. but from a talent perspective, adding all these SEC guys, Caleb Downs yes. and Junkins uh, specifically, yes. Saiyan's not going to play. Um, he's not in the battle right now for the quarterback uh, job. But without being stated, this is a loaded football team, and oh yeah, they brought yeah, Tim yes. Kelly in as well. That's the yeah. good news in Columbus. The bad news is they better win because yeah. it's it's kind of, it's yeah. unfortunate for Ryan Day, a coach who's been successful as he has been. That seed is warming up right now. I mean, yeah. with all this yeah. talent, all the money, all the transfers, they better win football games. Uh, Gabe, there are just no excuses at this point, right? Uh, that That's the reality of this. Uh, you mentioned Julian Sang, the Alabama transfer. Uh, you, you, you're correct. He's not ready, is he, Gabe? But I, but, but I can tell you, one day he will be, and he will be a force. Caleb Downs is ready, uh, that you mentioned in, in that secondary. Junkins is, too. I would agree. Uh, and, and, look, I think their defense will be okay. But, again, I mean, Gabe, to me, with them, it's the mental aspect of it. And that mental aspect, I've got a lot of things to do. But at the end of the year, they know who's going to be there. And they've lost three in a row. How's that going to weigh on them over the over the summer? I wonder. It's a great point, and I think I've said this before. Michigan wanted to beat Ohio State, but I think it I think it's too much for Ohio State. The pressure they put on themselves. Mm-hmm. They have a countdown mm-hmm. clock. You know what I mean? In 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 their mm-hmm. locker room all year, yeah. Oh, yeah. everybody knows right. the stakes, and I think it's just sort of always on their mind. Well, even though we're winning now, what's going to happen when we play Michigan at the end of the year? So Alabama, so Ohio State had a traditional, you know, spring spring football game. It was very competitive. Uh, Players are battling uh, for for starting jobs. Alabama takes the traditional approach as well. And then there's Lane Kiffin and and Ole Miss uh, (laughs) spring game in which – I guess they should have called it spring games, Brent, you know, with air quotes. It wasn't a spring game, spring games, guys. So for people that missed this, this was what they did in Oxford. Joey Chestnut was there crushing hot dogs. The yeah. players had a hot dog eating contest. Lane Kiffin's father, Monty Kiffin, was getting pu- pushed uh, in a golf cart uh, race. They had a tug of war. Football players, the Ole Miss football players, participated in a slam dunk contest, a basketball slam dunk uh contest it sounds like a great time was had by all what's your take on this uh brent um you know nobody's ever done anything like this uh, before no. lane thinks differently how's it being received by some people or some people saying oh you know what what is this is this a circus are we you know are we getting ready yeah. for the season um and other people are going to think you know what this is the future of football man let's have some fun right now what's your take I'm kind of in between with that. Uh, I, I would have loved to have seen a, what, Gabe, a 40 or 50 play scrimmage uh, along with uh, them having fun. But Lane's pretty coy. He's not going to show anything. 
Here's the deal with Ole Miss. Lane knows they're a playoff team. You and I have been talking about this for months. Uh, Jackson Dart comes back. Um, we talked about Junkins going to Ohio State. Uh, Trey Harris is back. And look, they're much improved with defense. You remember Walter Nolan from AM has transferred uh, to Ole Miss, and he's on the defensive line. So um, I, I truly think this is Lane's way of spicing it up, letting the team have some fun, and just having a lot of games. I did think the Joey Chest, Chestnut, can you imagine being in that hot dog contest, Gabe? Look at over the there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you know, you can do no better in second place. Uh, well, yeah, that, he could beat the three hundred pound lineman, no problem. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll take this guy down. But I'm just thinking as well. It's the opposite of like old school football, isn't it? it? Is. You know, it good is. diet oh, yeah. and stuff. It's like, no, we're having a hot dog eating contest. We're not. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, don't eat junk food. Don't do this. Kiffin does it a different way. And let's be real; these spring practice games are more for show, right? It's they to are. show. Yeah. It's to show the alumni, show the fan base, mm-hmm. show the boosters. This is right. what we have. You know, we're working on yeah. this. This is what we've yes. got so far. And we'll, we'll be, we'll be our, you know, this this job will be completed in a couple of months yeah. when, when when the season uh, starts. So as far as Alabama is concerned, what were the takeaways from Alabama's uh, spring game and Jalen Milrow adapting to this new pass-happy offense? Well, his throwing motion is better. Uh, I think that's one thing that's important. Uh, the other thing that may be just as important is a backup quarterback, Ty Simpson, has let it be known he's not going anywhere. He's staying. And Gabe, look, you and I know the SEC. You know how quickly a quarterback can get hurt, and you got to use your second team or third team quarterback to uh, uh, at least for a game or two, or maybe in the season. So I, I think that's something that's going to be important for them to be able to do that. I think they were. Uh, that they were pleased. Look, this team, this team's offense is has uh, the, what I've heard from the media in Alabama may be better than the offense they had last year. Uh, I think so, it will be, Brent. Yeah, I think it yeah. will be. And no offense to it's not no offense. You know, Saban's a legend, but I think the Boar. Look what the Boar has done over the years. Yes. Look, look what he did at Indiana. Yes. Look how he, and Washington. Yeah. One thing about this, Brent, you talked about uh, about Jalen Milrow and the footwork. I think Milrow's going to. I think Milrow's going to be in the, in the NFL. I think yeah. he's going to work his way into this, into being a big time NFL draft right. pick, right. sort of like yeah. Anthony Richardson did. One thing about about Milrow that he can already do, Brent. We know he can throw a bomb, right? He's got a cannon. He can throw the ball deep. DeBoer's offense is a lot of intermediate stuff. And a lot of, like, sort of NFL-style throws. But I think Milrow has the arm strength to pull it off. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. Milrow's development, and I think he's going to kill it, Brent, personally. I think Milrow's going to be a star. Yes. Well, and listen, you told me this Jeremy Bernard kid at wide receiver was good. They think he's terrific. Uh, I mean, what he did in the spring game, I mean, he may end up being the number one receiver uh, before it's over, frankly. Jim Miller at running back, Justice Haynes. Uh, they've got one of the better running back rooms anywhere. Now, what they don't want is Washington's offense and Washington's defense. So that's what that, that's the thing. And that's sort looking. of what happened in the spring game, wasn't it? It was like, oh, man, the yeah. offense is lighting these guys up. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's the thing they're, that, that they're watching for. But, over, but overall, they had a good spring and look, I, I, I keep giving you credit here, but you're but you were you were right on. I'm just telling you, Kalen DeBoer has won these people over. Uh, they won. The, he's won the media over. He's won the fans over. I think he's transparent. I think he's sincere. And uh, you got to win, especially in Alabama. But Gabe, so far, everything DeBoer has done, uh, I think people have been very pleased with it. And DeBoer wasn't the first the first name that the Alabama faithful, like, you know, not a West wet West coast guy right. coming from Washington. Right. right. You know, people, but the Alabama, Alabama AD had his eye on DeBoer, right? He yes. always knew this, yes. this guy, this guy can coach. 
But, Brent, what about the story now that Starkeesian admits, yeah, they offered me the job, I thought about it, but I think Texas is on the verge of doing something big and winning a national championship. Yeah. Uh, Well, look, I I can understand him doing that. Uh, It it was hard for him to leave, uh, and and I get that. And Sarkeesian would have done a good job. He will always be grateful, and and he would tell you this anytime you meet him, that Nick Saban was instrumental in saving his career uh, in in a lot of ways. So, but, but Gabe, this Texas team with Quinn Ewers, that their their running back room is, is one of the best uh, in the nation. They know that uh, they've got to get better defensively. They've lost uh, a lot of talent, though, Brett. Just looking at the did. NFL draft, Worthy, yeah. Mitchell, two wide receivers that are going in the yeah. first and second round. Uh, like, what about like, Murphy, too? People are talking about oh, yeah. Murphy. Maybe be the first defensive player taken now. Yeah, yeah, he could be. That's a really good point. But, but Gabe, one thing, and I'm going to be fascinated to see the hype with all this, as you know, Texas goes to Michigan. Georgia goes to Texas. Man, oh, man. Already no, this is going to be the craziest, run. craziest college football season ever. <laughs> We're talking about all these teams. And they all sound great. It's like walking into a buffet, Brad. Yeah, Everything looks good. Really is. It's like, man, Ohio oh, yeah. State look good. Oh, I like it. You're like, man, Alabama's yeah. offense look good. Everybody looks good. More with Ben Peter on the other side. This is Sports Race. Bring it. Tani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well for Dane Green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Two, one. 
the first that I throw down continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Marantzi. We're kicking it uh, with the great Brett Beard. We're talking college football. We'll get into the NFL draft a little bit. I want to get his thoughts on some of these SEC players, but sort of a tie-in here. I believe that Jaden Daniels is going to go second uh, to the Washington Commanders. Perfect fit with Cliff Kingsbury being the, the offensive coordinator there. But speaking of these SEC teams in spring practice right now and pressure on coaches, we talked about, you were talking about Ole Miss and their expectation is to make the playoffs. And I think it has to be now with the expanded playoffs. Very similar situation that James Franklin's going to find himself in now. Now there's no excuse. Right. right. You're, you're yeah. always one game out. Now it's like, now there's no excuse for these teams. But what about Brian Kelly and LSU? Jaden Daniels isn't there. And I know they always just replace wide receivers all the time. It's wide receiver you there. But you're losing Malik Neighbors, you're losing Brian Thomas, you're losing Jaden Daniels. I know they're emphasizing the defense in the offseason right now. That Kelly knows this defense has to get better. He doesn't like playing in these 51 45 football games. But what so, about LSU? How are they replacing all these players on offense? Who's the quarterback? Well, Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be the quarterback, and he, he was a backup. And I think he'll be fine. Now, look, is he Jaden Daniels? No. Uh, and no one is. Who, by the way, if I had the top pick, that's who I'd pick. But anyway, the reality is – You like Daniels more than Williams even, huh? Yeah, I do. I I, I do. I just think he can do more. I I don't think there's anything James Daniels can't do, Gabe. Um, I mean, I know he probably needs to get some bigger and whatever, and that will take care of itself. But I just think he's outrageous as a quarterback. But but to your point, uh, Nussmeyer's been in the system. Uh, He knows it. He's familiar with it. Uh, I think that's going to help them. The point you made is going to be the difference in their season is uh, Brian Kelly's made a real effort. Uh, he got Baker, the defense coordinator from Missouri, to be his defense coordinator. He got Bo Davis from Texas, who's the best defensive line coach in the nation. Uh, he got Corey Raymond from Florida, uh, who is their secondary coach. Uh, now, look, the problem still is – there were LSU receivers running wild in the spring game, but it was still the spring game. But I still think they're going to be better defensively because Kelly woke up and realized, and you and I talked about this uh, at the end of the season, that's, that is where they had to improve was on the defensive side of the ball. And if they did not, Gabe, they were going to be a middle-of-the-pack SEC team. So I give him a lot of credit for realizing what they had to do. The Buffalo Bills need a wide receiver. Uh, They trade Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. Gabriel Davis signs uh, with Jacksonville. Their wide receiver room is pretty much empty uh, right now. And there's a lot of talk about Brian Thomas, LSU wide receiver. There's no guarantee he's still going to be there. There's a lot of people think the Bills might try to trade up a couple of spots to get him specifically. What are your thoughts on him? Everybody talks about, we know about Malik Neighbors, but you've seen Neighbors, you've seen Thomas. What's your assessment after seeing these guys play for a couple of years? Look, there are times Thomas can be just as good. Um, I mean, he's a burner. He's got good hands. Um, I mean, he can, get, he can get really good separation. I tell you, Gabe, I'm at the point with these LSU receivers, uh, when people ask me about the draft, I can almost say, look, if he, if the guy's in an LSU uniform, you know he's going to be worth the draft pick. <laughs> yeah, but you I'm blindly sorry, take him. Just, I've said I've said the same thing. Yeah. You just blindly take the guy. <laughs> like, <if laughs> look at the progression. And you know what? I was lucky. Really? It, was, it was pretty cool. I actually saw Odell play live with yes. LSU. I went right. to an LSU Mississippi State mm-hmm. game on yes. Eric Mold's day, uh, Buffalo Bill connection. It was Eric mm-hmm. Mold's day in uh, in Starkville. So, but if you think from the, you know, from Odell, Jarvis Landry, Justin Jefferson, right? you know, they just don't miss for the most part, no, right? I no, mean, no. and uh, there's been others as well. We can't get to the ball, but they're good. But what about Xavier Leggett? This is a player that's being compared to A.J. Brown. He's being compared to um, Debo Samuel a lot, you know, uh, two other former SEC guys. What are your right. thoughts on Leggett? And I know he's raw, but does he have that upside that those guys have? I, I think he probably does. Uh, uh, really good question. Now, 
you might he may end up because he's raw. I'll be very interested to see where he goes, but at the same time, got good speed, got good hands. Uh, but my goodness, uh, Gabe, anybody who plays in the league, uh, it, that, that's as tough as this is. And with the DBs you've got to deal with, um, I, I think they deserve a chance, and I think he does too. Now, there's all these flashy wide receivers, but at times, you know what? Um, you win championships with the stake, not the sizzle. And Lad McConkey is all about that, isn't he? So, you know, people aren't really talking about this guy, but this is a guy that I, I figure that a winning coach and a winning football team is going to love to have in, in his offense, uh, Brent. What's your take on McConkey out of Georgia? He just makes plays. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Uh, I, look, I would, if I was an NFL team, I would draft McConkey. And, and I'm just telling you, Gabe, they, they, they probably won't do it. To me, Brock Bowers is the top ten pick. I mean, I, 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 and I don't. This is not hype for me or hyperbole. Brock Bowers is one of the best football players I've ever I've ever seen. And and I, uh, I had some Georgia beat writers tell me. I think I shared this with you on the segment. They were so confident in Bowers that that if Carson Beck had gotten hurt, they could put him in at quarterback and they'd be okay with him. I mean, that's just unbelievable to think about that, isn't it, Gabe? But I'm just telling you, uh, Bowers literally won that Auburn game by himself. Uh, he get and, and, and McConkey's this way, too. What they do besides catching the ball with their hands is, Gabe, that they're precise route runners, and they get, they get good separation. And, and, and these guys, are they just make plays. I know. I, I look, they're going to get they're going to get eight up with the numbers and, and the analytics and all that. But, but, but look, I, I've been on with you and know you en uh, enough to where you understand if a guy's a good football player, that's the bottom line. Uh, to, to me, uh, I just don't get caught up. I respect them, but I just don't get caught up uh, w w with all the numbers. And those two guys from Georgia gave, I would, if I had a choice high up, I would pick those guys because you won't regret it. You know, it's I, I totally, completely agree with you, and I've been talking about, and I've told people about what you've said about he's one of the best football players you've ever seen. Yes. You've been watching SEC yes. football for a long time. I don't think it's crazy. Like if I was drafting, I would have a legitimate or you know debate about is Marvin Harrison a better pick than Brock Bowers for us. Like, people don't realize this guy, he's that much of a playmaker. Yards after the he catch is. as well. He's impossible to tackle, he even though he's not a massive dude. He just right. plays with that determination. He'll run through a wall. Great route runner. And I understand, though. Marvin Harrison wants to be an Arizona Cardinal, and that doesn't happen often, right? right. Where someone, right. like, you know, they mm -hmm. he's put it out there. He's comfortable with it. He wants to play with Kyler Murray. So I understand why the Cards want to go that route. At five, the Chargers are trying to rebuild. Harbaugh's got a five-year deal. He knows he's not winning the Super Bowl this year. I think he's going to surprise people and go Joe Alt, offensive lineman out of Notre yeah. Dame, with right. the fifth pick. But I'm going to throw this at you, Brent. The Tennessee Titans with the seventh pick. They brought in Pollard from the Cowboys. They signed Calvin Ridley. They have DeAndre Hopkins. So it would make sense potentially for them to go defense with seven. But, man, you drop Brock Bowers in this offense with Will Evans and those guys, yeah. I think he's a perfect yeah. fit with the Tennessee Titans, Brent. It, and I'm betting it. I'm betting that Brock Bowers will be a top-ten pick. I think he goes to seven to Tennessee. I think it's a perfect fit for him. And or I think Aaron Rodgers and the Jets are looking at him and going, we got to get this guy. Yeah. I think he oh, could yeah. go ten yes. to the Jets, Brent. But, well, and, and the other thing with Bowers is Bowers has a very high football IQ. Uh, and and he knows football. He knows what to do when he's uh, when he's midstream and he a play. understands the route, he right? He understands. Like he some does. guys are running it, he understands the play. He does. And look, there are all kinds of ways you can use Bowers. I mean, you can use him on a on a jet sweep. You can use him as an H back. My goodness, you could use him as a running back as you had to do it. And, and, and look, Jacksonville is in the same division with Tennessee and Houston. And I can tell you, 
few teams have made as much progress in the offseason as Houston and Tennessee. Uh, uh, and he, you're, I think you're spot on there. He would be absolutely superlative for Tennessee, Gabe, because they need playmakers, don't they? Uh, you know, obviously Derrick Henry's gone, but you've got a situation where they need guys like Bowers. And, and, and you know, I don't want to hear this stuff of, well, you know, Bowers is slow. No, re- actually, he's not. Whatever, look, does Bauer, is he a 4 2 4 3 guy? No. But as we talked about, he, he overcompensates for things like that with his, his IQ and how smart he is especially when he gets in the secondary. I, you know, I'm almost looking at him like he's going to be a Cooper Cup type. Like, people don't realize it. Yeah, yeah. Like once he gets into yes. the NFL, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, he had nine catches last night. <laughs> it's going to be one yeah. of those dudes. Yeah, really? Right? It's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he had 12 catches last night. Like, sort of like the Travis Kelsey. I think, you know, yeah. I mean, you look how they've leaned on him. I think, I agree with you, Brett. I think he's that good. Yes. I think it's just a, yes. a perfect, perfect fit with the, with the, t- listen, you look at that division, man. You talked about it, Brett. The Houston Texans aren't playing around. <laughs> no, no. Like, and don't forget, Tank <laughs> Dell got hurt. They got Nico yeah. Collins, like out of yeah. Michigan. He's, he's turning into a great NFL wide receiver. You bring in Stephon Diggs. Yes. And you look at the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson looked good before he got hurt. I'm, you know, yeah. that's that's yeah. the big thing. It I think is. Brett now that he's been hurt and he's he's on the sidelines watching. I think he's. It's going to be a big step for him this year as well, Richardson. Yeah. I hope he can stay healthy because he's so fun to watch. Uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. L- listen to me now. He he doesn't have the accuracy that Jaden Daniels does, but he 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 could be a really good uh, to to your point, do a threat quarterback and be really dangerous. My stars, Gabe. Imagine that kid on on third and three, what he could do if he really improves. Uh, Brad, we've got like one minute left here. So I just wanted to ask you, Dallas Turner was the consensus first defensive player. Such an offensive draft in the first round. Yeah. People right. were thinking the Atlanta Falcons going to take Dallas Turner, but we were talking about Murphy out of Texas, and I speak to scouts and guys that are in the business, and they're telling me, no, no, it's not crazy if Murphy's the first defensive player taken. And it wouldn't yeah. shock me if the Titans went there either. We're just talking about Bowers yeah. to the Titans, but I think Turner or Murphy could go to the Titans at seven. But, yeah, yeah, boy, that'd be a big pickup for them too. I can tell you this on Turner, and I've been in, I've I've been in the press Sorry, box Brad, twenty seconds. Played. Yeah, Turner's tremendous. Uh, has a great motor, and I can tell you one thing: he and Will Anderson were in that were in that Bama defense at the same time, Gabe. That made them more dangerous. Yeah, it worked out pretty well for the Houston Texans getting Will yeah. Anderson. I tell you, and hey, we'll speak next week, Brett. I can't wait to see how this draft uh, plays Absolutely. out. Uh, Brett, where can people find you online? Yeah, thank you at Brett Beard B E A I R D Second Helpings. Also, uh, for college football analyst for ABC and NBC affiliates at First Coast News. Gabe, love you, brother. Always enjoy being with you, and uh, it's a great time of year. You're the best, Brett. Sports Rage continues. Bring it. We talked about the Otani story, this, uh, this interpreter... Uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well for game green your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof people listen to me play games at seven o'clock get more ratings make more money it's simple but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule i can't figure it out the early line only on sports grid 
It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10 plus years it's amazing did you say he was smiling or smiley only on sports grid i mean they're still the best they're still the champs everyone wants to crown the celtics the champions but that's not the way it works they got to beat them and, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh, tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi. Shout out to Brent Beard. Always awesome stuff. And well, we've got uh, we've got a result uh, here. Even though the hockey game isn't done, the LA Kings did enough. This is some wild stuff tonight, man. The LA Kings were down one nothing after the first period of play. Then they were up three one after two periods of play. And Vegas lost tonight. So if LA wins, they climb and they pass Vegas in the standings. Then Chicago comes back and takes a 4-3 lead, but the LA Kings just scored in the game's final moment to tie the game, and now we're in overtime, and it doesn't matter if the Kings, what, whatever happens to them now, because they got a point, and uh, they, they own the tiebreaker against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. So it's official. The LA Kings will be playing the Edmonton Oilers and even though the NHL never announced this, I told you guys this earlier in the day, it'll be Monday, all right? <laughs> Let me handle the scheduling, Gary. It'll be Monday. And lo and behold, they just popped it up on the screen. The LA Kings are playing the Edmonton Oilers on Monday. So um, it's set. The Las Vegas Golden Knights. Wow, this this changes things up in a sense. I think this is an easier path. No disrespect to the LA Kings. But the Edmonton Oilers have a hard time with the Vegas Golden Knights. Now the Oilers get to avoid the Vegas Golden Knights. The Oilers are better than the L.A. Kings are. Like the Kings are going to be the ones trying to keep the puck out of the net. And I get it. It's going to be a battle. I'm not dismissing the Kings. But I think this is a big game changer here suddenly. Like I like Dallas a lot. But suddenly if you're Dallas, you got to deal with the Vegas Golden Knights. They could lose that series. Then they got to be, they got to, they got to play Colorado or Winnipeg after. Meanwhile, the Edmonton Oilers get the L.A. Kings and the winner of the Nashville Predators and or the Vancouver Canucks. And the Kings just won uh, for good measure. We're going to break it all down tomorrow. Let's roll. The playoffs are here. We're going to have all of our best bets and predictions tomorrow night. Another night, you're on your own. Later.